good day, fellow fish freaks. How are we all doing? Hope oh, we're doing good. So, as you all know, it's time for Friday Fish Tip. Now, I've gotten quite a lot of requests uh, to do a video on this specific thing. Uh, and that thing being my homemade um, horizontal filters that are air driven and sat on the bottom of the tank so they're kind of like a, a cross between the Hamburg Matten filter and the old school under gravel filter it works pretty much in the same way um, and as I say a lot of you guys have been pointing them out after watching videos wondering basically how I made them and how they work and basically are they good. So let's go. Hello and welcome back. So yeah, a lot of you guys have been seeing these filters. They're pretty self-explanatory really. These are small 18 by 12 by 12 tanks, hold around 40 litres or so. So basically what comprises of these filters is you've got a glass partition running right across the width of the tank. Now this glass uh, partition is sized by how thick the sponge is and how deep you want your gravel bed. So for me I wanted a 2 inch gravel bed and I'm using 2 inch thick sponge so therefore I needed a minimum of a 4 inch tall strip of glass so that's exactly what I did I cut um, a strip of glass measuring 12 inches wide uh, to fit on the inside and then it was 4 inches tall filled the bottom up obviously after waiting for the silicone to cure Filled the bottom two inch up with standard um, river gravel that I bought from a local builder's yard. Uh, completely aquarium safe. After all, it's basically been pulled out of a river. Now you do need to make sure when using this stuff, you need to rinse the hell out of it because it does contain a lot of dust. And then you got two inch sponge capped on the top and then your outlet pipe. Now that piece of pipe is a 21 and a half mil overflow waste pipe, uh, six inches long, and it reaches right to the very bottom of the gravel. And you can do one or two things. You can either drill the bottom of the pipe so that uh, water's pulled in from different angles around the pipe, or you can just leave it as an open pipe. I'm using both methods and I'm not really seeing much of a difference between the two um, and then obviously round the back of the pipe I've got a 5mm hole which snugly fits the air pipe so that's pretty much it really so obviously you will need your 2 inch thick sponge um, now I get a lot of people asking me where I get this sponge from it's not an easy answer, it is quite difficult to get here in the UK in a decent sized sheet. Um, I'd recommend looking at a website called aquaristic.net or if you don't want to go down that route you can speak to me and I can uh, buy it in two foot by two foot sheets for you which is around 20-25 pounds shipped. No problem doing that. So you've got your sponge You'll need some form of glass or perspex. This is perspex. I've used both. Both work in exactly the same way. And obviously you need to figure out how deep do you want your gravel and how thick is your sponge. So for me, I want a 2 inch deep gravel and 2 inch thick sponge. So therefore I needed a 4 inch wide panel. Easily enough. It is easier to cut perspex than it is with glass. As always, wear safety goggles and gloves. Whether you're cutting perspex or glass, they're both equally as dangerous. You can cut perspex using a standard utility or Stanley knife. 
just make several scores around both sides. So you'd score along that edge several times, flip it over and do again both sides and then snap it. Or if you're using glass, you want to make one single score with your glass cutter on one side and then it, it should snap when you put even pressure to both sides. After that, you'll need a piece of pipe. So, what I tend to do is, if I've got a four inch deep panel, you want at least a five inch tall piece of pipe, preferably six, six inch. When you cut it slightly too short, or when you do cut it shorter, the outlet will be like that. Which, you know, it, it is nicer because it it's more tidy in my opinion, but it is more tricky to get the, the airline and stuff in, so just keep that in mind when you're building yours. But it's really simple, really, really, really simple. So when I explain it like this, you've got, I'll just zoom in. You've got your gravel across the bottom. Now that's acting um, as basically biomedia. So you get all the beneficial bacteria growing on all the open spores and all of the little crevices and cracks of the gravel. Uh, and that's basically an under gravel filter right there, but without the power head and without all the trays and stuff. And then above, your sponge, well that's acting as your mechanical media. So that's physically taking out the detritus in your water, and it's all ran by air. Nice and simple. The pipe starts at the top, goes right to the bottom, sits a couple of mil off the bottom of the tank, so it doesn't actually sit on the glass bottom. And as you can see, there's... You can see bits of dirt within the gravel there. Zoom back out and go to another tank where... There's a noticeable amount of mulm within the sponge. This one, if the filter will... Or the camera will pick it up, sorry. There you go, you can see all the mole within the spores of the foam. Now that's just proof that it does work, and they work very well. Go back round the tanks once again. Clean. 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 They're all clean. Nice clear water, no free floating particles which is great. I really rate these filters a lot. Yes, it takes a bit of time actually making and preparing the filters. You've got to glue in the panel and then wait a minimum of 24 hours before you can put all the media in and stuff, but it's well worth the wait, guys, well worth the wait. And they mature up just as quick as any other filter as well, really. They don't take a great deal longer than standard filters. Now a lot of you might be thinking, well, okay, you've talked about the gravel, so I know what gravel I need to buy, but when I'm looking at the sponge, I can see many different PPIs. What's the best, Danny? Well, really that all depends on your fish. If you've got big fish, like me mate Eric, who's a decent sized angel fish, you're going to want a bigger pores per inch, that's what PPI stands for, uh, sponge. So you're going to want something like 30 PPI. Or, if you've got tiddler fish, babies, like these small limia melanogaster, you'll want a smaller grade sponge, maybe 20 PPI, which is a more finer foam. Uh, let me see, this sponge is 20 ppi, and the sponge used in here, I think, no, nope, in here, that one, that's 30, so it's quite a noticeable difference, 
obviously the bigger the fish the bigger the waste so if you if you use a, a too fine of a filter uh, with big fish they're just going to get clogged up quick and need cleaning all the time but if you use a bigger bore sponge like this one you'll clean it less but I'd say for a safe average mm, 20 ppi is pretty much good for any tank really that's a safe bet to go by if you just want a quick a quick fix so that's about it really cleaning how to, how, how do you go about cleaning these well I tend to clean these once every 6 to 12 months I last cleaned the filters in this particular tank for oh, seven months ago does it look dirty to you nope never judge a book by its cover guys just because i haven't cleaned this filter for seven months it doesn't mean that i'm i'm a lazy idiot who doesn't know what he's doing water parameters come out spot on in fact i should have really prepared a little test before shooting a bit so I could prove it but there you go too late but yeah very minimal maintenance to them very easy to build very easy to maintain when it needs cleaning you literally just pull off the sponge give it a rinse in your bucket of old tank water and then get your gravel back out and just use that on the gravel jobs are good and put the sponge back on there you go you've got your filter again And that, that's pretty much all there is to tell you really you don't need a great amount of air to power these so you could get away with using the small kind of air pumps so with all that being said let's do a quick dive under the water so you can get up close and personal to one of the filters and then we'll come back wrap the sucker up I'll tell you to stay sexy, although at this moment in time I should be telling you to stay healthy because I'm currently sick as a dog. But yeah, let's go and have a dive, shall we? Welcome back. Let's start the uh, dive. have it that is how you build maintain and love horizontal flatbed filters told you it weren't that difficult really there was nothing to it it's good what you can come up with when you put your mind to it I suppose now don't get me wrong I haven't invented this idea um, I have not quite as much as seen it uh, basically I was in a, um, a localish pet shop to me and they were running the same kind of system that you see in my tanks but it was all just gravel there was no sponge or anything with it um, and then a friend of mine did an off spin to that but he used alpha grog instead of gravel and then I thought sod it Alpha Grog's a bit expensive when you've got so many tanks to do. Let's use gravel because I can get it like four quid for 25 kilo bags. Gravel, two inch sponge, jobs are good. Un. The filters work, very minimal maintenance, um, and you know, my tanks have got to be clean. I, I don't like 
free floating particles, I don't like algae, I don't like dirt on the sand, I don't like dirt on the glass, fingerprints, any of that, hate it. All my tanks have to be clean. So for me to be able to leave a tank running for seven months without cleaning the filter is quite hard for me to do it. Uh, it's like the Hamburg Matten filters for instance put them in a tank and they say oh you never have to clean that never have to clean it you just need to stick it in the tank wait until the flow is pretty much non-existent rip the sponge out bin it chuck a new one in so just show you this quick uh, be right back so there you have it that's my take on filters and stuff yeah boy um, I'm going to stop this video now before I fall asleep um, and then I'm going to crawl to my bed and I'm going to stay there until Friday because I shoot my videos early and then I'm going to get up on Friday I'm going to stick the video on YouTube and then I'm going to go back to bed not because I'm lazy just because I'm a wimp can't stand being ill all I want to do is sleep so yeah, oh well, so as always, I'm Danny, you're watching the DW Aquatics channel, thank you very much for watching, if you've not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button so you can come back and see new videos every week, and as always, stay sexy, see you in a video soon, ta la!